Hi, and you're welcome to the presentation for the latest release updates to the Enterprise platform. I'm Sharon Mulligan, and in this session, we will simply look at the cool features that have been added to enhance value and to increase usability within Enterprise. So the first one we have is the quick actions through the grid views. So if we click in here, for example, to sales, and if we go to any of the grid views, so for example, if we click here onto invoices, and this is the grid view. So this is where it will show you all the relevant transactions. If I right click on a row for any transaction at any point across the row, I will now get a selection of quick actions. So for example, with the invoice here, you can see that I can click straight, to, straight away to pay, I can cancel, I can edit, I can copy to a sales credit note, I can duplicate, and I can download the PDF. So what does this do? This saves you time. So it's saving you all the extra clicks without having to, first of all, click into the invoice and then take the necessary actions. So it's saving you time and getting you to the end result quicker. So next on the release list, we have the copy from function. This is available throughout the sales transactions for both item and service type. So for example, if we start off here in sales and if we go to invoices, so when we go to create a new invoice, we can choose obviously from the item or service. And if we choose the item, as you would normally do and select our customer, you now have this new button here called copy from. So what does this do? So the benefit here is that with the copy from option, I get to select from the different types of transactions to copy from, whether that's a quote, an order, or a delivery, I get to choose and select the rows within those transactions to copy to this final invoice. I can, of course, consolidate and select multiple lines from various transactions to create my invoice, my final invoice. So even at this point in time, we're allowing consolidation from multiple transactions. So let's click on the copy from button and see what we get here on the next screen. So first of all, we get to select the items to copy. So as I've mentioned, you get to choose from your quotes, your orders or deliveries. So for example, if we were to select from the sales deliveries, we can also, of course, do a search here if you want to look for a specific transaction number or you know the series of transaction numbers to locate or very simply just come down here on the left hand side of the screen and simply select, as you can see here, for each document number, it shows the open rows that are still available within that document to select. So I can simply come down here and select the relevant lines. As I select those lines, you will see that they are now populated on the right hand side of the screen. So already you can see that I have pulled lines and rows from multiple document numbers. So I'm consolidating those now into my final invoice. So the value and the time saving that you will have now creating that final document has increased. So let's click on add lines. And of course, those lines will now appear on the final sales invoice screen. So from here, you can do the normal edits um, that you would normally do against a row. So for example, if you need to change a price, if you need to change a quantity, if you need to apply a discount, etc., that you can perform all the relevant edits here. You can, of course, add additional lines and, of course, go back into the copy from if you want to add further lines, consolidate the invoice even further. And that's the benefit of using the copy from function within Enterprise. So next on the release list, we have service calls for your suppliers. So this has been introduced to enable you to record service calls to ensure that you've got prompt service and response to your ex ex existing customer queries. And of course, where you identify internally issues that need to be resolved even for your own business and for your own purposes, whether that's repair services or maintenance, whatever is required that you can now log that against your supplier. So if we go in here to services, click on service calls, and now go to new service call. You will see here that the change to the screen, you can now choose from the business partner type. We've got customer or supplier. So when you choose supplier, you can now of course search within your list of suppliers and select the relevant supplier from the list. 
and you can then assign that service call to a specific user within your organization. So just to confirm that with the supplier service calls, you don't get to allocate them to a queue, but they're just allocated to the relevant supplier account and the relevant users. So it makes for easier tracking of all those relevant issues, whether they be internal or as follow-ups to issues that your customer potentially is having with the service or equipment that you've already provided from your supplier. So once you've added your supplier service call, and let's just add something in there. And if we save that, and when you've added the supplier service call, let me just drill back into that here. And from here as well, what we can do is we can create a purchase order from our service call as you've done before. The same as with the service calls for customers, you can create transactions from those service calls. So we can create a purchase order. In addition, if we come down here to the related documents, so we can add on a document and whether that, of course, if we go to the list of documents here, you'll be able to choose from purchase order, purchase return, purchase invoice, purchase credit note and purchase delivery. It really is that simple and adding more value to your organization. So now let's take a look at some valuable changes which have been applied to the Shopify integration with Enterprise. So this first feature basically relates to the name of the customer that comes through from the Shopify order. So first of all, we have to look at what way you've defined your settings within Enterprise on the integration. So if we look over here on Explore Add-ons and Services, so this is a prerequisite, and let's just double click on the Shopify icon. Let's then edit one of your web or store locations for e-commerce. And when we edit that and we scroll down, you can see there that we have a Shopify default customer. So this is where all of those orders, depending on where you've defined the, the settings here, whether it's a sales order or whether it's a reserve invoice, will get updated too. So this is the default customer within Enterprise that all of those postings will get to get posted to. So you can see here, this is ADA Technologies. So if we were to leave all orders coming through from Shopify as they stand, everything would come through as just ADA Technologies. So for example, if we look here on the Shopify grid, and this is where all of your transactions have come through for obviously approval. And once they've been approved, they get assigned their sales transaction number. So for example, if I look here at one that has not been assigned a customer name through the Shopify channel, if we click into that transaction, you can see here that the customer is ADA Technologies. However, if we then look at a transaction that has come through from Shopify with the name of the customer, which we can see here on the ship address condium. And if we drill into that transaction, you can see that the customer's name is present. So it's really that simple, just giving you more visibility to what's coming through from your Shopify store. So let me just show you that here in the back end of the store itself. So for example, where all the orders have come through, you can see here under the customer condium. So whatever is detailed under the customer condium, coming through in the back end of your Shopify store is what will now come through to Enterprise. So you've traceability all the way back to the online order. So now let's take a look at the second update that we've done to the Shopify integration. So currently with the Shopify integration, any order or invoice that comes through from the Shopify store from your customers into your enterprise organization is posted as a stock transaction or a an item invoice or an item order. So that means that there's stock posting, there's fulfillment of course on the enterprise side where the stock totals get incremented and decreased accordingly depending on the sale or if it's a return for example. So with this new setting, we have enabled you to have further control. So perhaps items and posting of transactions is not necessary for your business. So what we've enabled you to do now is to switch to service transactions only. So what that means is that you can 
tick a box on your web location within Enterprise for Shopify. You can enable the service documents. This will ensure that any of the orders or invoices that come through from your Shopify store will now get added as a service transaction. So the same information, the same totals, the same amounts, everything is exactly the same in terms of tax and totals. Just they now come through as a service transaction so there are no stock postings. So if we take a look at that in the settings, so to enable, to enable it in the settings, simply go into Explore Add-ons and Services. Come down to Shopify and double click. Then simply edit your web location store. So we click in here to edit. And we now have this new option here to create service documents. So if we tick this box, it then enables a new entry, which is service document account. So this is the default GL account within your accounting system that all of those service transactions will get posted to. So that's important if you have a specific web sales account or simply if you have a different um, revenue account that you want to ensure that all those transactions get posted to. So let me just pick up a sales account for in order for that to get posted to. And let's come down here to the bottom and click on save. So now when a sale goes through, so let me just show you that here as well. So we'll just look at this on the back end of the store. So again, if we create a sale through here on the back end, so we can choose our customer. So let's select an item. And let's add that to our sales transaction. And let's just complete that. Okay, so that's just been created in the background, just as an order. You can see there through Shopify, which would normally come in from the store anyway. So we can see that there in the total for today. And then if we pop back into Enterprise, and if we go to Shopify there, you can see there we have the pending transaction for that particular store. Let me just approve that. So now we have the transaction number 19 there. So now if we pop into the sales and go to the list of orders that have come and approved from um, Shopify. And if we look there at order number 19, the one that we've come through, you can see there that the service document type has now been assigned to that transaction. So it's no longer an item or stock document that's coming through from Shopify even though the item assigned to that particular order is in fact a stock item, but there's no fulfillment necessary. So if I drill into that particular transaction, you can see here that the item details come through. It tells you in the description and of course the value and the price and of course the name as per the, the first feature for Shopify integration that we detailed. So that's all the features for the January release. So do take a look and see the value that it's going to bring within your organization and within the enterprise platform. Thank you for watching.